You guys are going to love this. Our next guest is an ex-Hollywood executive that worked with New Line Cinema and Paramount Pictures. She's the co-founder of Milk and Honey, which allows you to create your perfect pair of high-end shoes. And now is the new co-founder of a new company called Wade and Bell, which is dedicated to eliminating the, the muffin top. Well put. If you guys know where I'm grabbing. And then uh, you're going to do that by providing the most comfortable women's tights yes, sir. in the world, in the universe, Absolutely. in the holographic universe, multiverse. So please put your hands together for Dorian Howard. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Ooh. Let a little bit of the nerd slip out there. A little bit. So, oh, but I heard you have some nerd in you too. So you are either born with the ability or somehow you l learned at a very young age to read everything backwards? Yeah, I don't know. I think I was born with it because it's nothing I ever figured out. How to, I never learned how to yeah. do it. Just one day I realized that I can speak backwards. Yeah, 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 not just reads. Yeah, and it's weird. Do you do it? Well, what do you want me to say? <laughs> just, you, you, can, you, can tar you can either start speaking and, or I can, I can do the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, yeah, yeah, start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I del piknalia uta galfo detnu itats veri karima, dena uta kobapper rofa katuiti denats, ino noiten, renu dog, ebelzivini, hutu yitrabul, dena ikitsaj rofla. Anybody verify that? Okay, so. But, hey, Papa, will you grab, will you grab the, uh, the drinking song? I'm going to see if she can read that thing. Can you sing it? No. <laughs> can you sing back? Yeah, can you do the... the I can't the... sing forwards, Okay, but but I can... at least this way we can verify. Okay. Who knows what okay, that is. So that Pledge of Allegiance thing, that could have been it. It, it could have been, I think. So just, just to explain how I do it, it's the right order, but each individual word is flipped. Oh, okay, so and you're, you're going to through our ups, but each one will be okay. Exactly. Gotcha, so, Higurot, Ruray, Spu, Dena, Nuad, Ireta, Dena, Dena, Ganis, and Ganikner, Ganos, Tisaot, Ot, Isot, Iu, Evil, Et, Tisom, Nia, Ikap, or Iwa, E, Ganoleb, Srik. Yeah, it's true. It actually works. You are amazing. It's the one talent I have. It's like my one skill, and it doesn't really translate to much of anything. Although every once in a great while, someone will say, "Like, can you do Come anything weird?" Come on my weird? show. That we drink beers yeah. in our it's living room. It's a podcast. Room, and, like, we drink we need... PBR. Can, yeah. What can you do? I was like, ah, I can speak backwards. All right. Wow, that is that is amazing. Okay, so we'll try to get a little serious. So we have an entrepreneurial crowd. A lot of people awesome. are kind of in that sub five hundred thousand dollars sort of new entrepreneur, which is where yeah. you've been in the, their shoes a couple times yep. now. But I wanted to talk Literally about Literally and figuratively. Oh yeah, that's right. Figuratively <laughs> also. Shoes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but I the, like um, shoe puns, sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Yo, you you are probably the master at shoe puns. Pretty so good. you've gotta you gotta lay Don't them out for me because I might miss. Yeah. Good one. Double good one. Two X. Okay, so twenty eight thousand misprinted Shoe boxes early in your career? Can you tell me about this story? Uh, not early in my career, like six months ago. Oh, um, so sorry. when we launched Milk and Honey, there are a bunch of things that we did right and a bunch of things we did wrong. When we launched Wade and Bell, we decided let's really be better about how we're doing things and go by the numbers a little bit more. With with our first startup, you're just like, woohoo, we have a startup. Let's just go do things and go do things. And then you're launching, you're doing product, you're trying to get, and then you take a step back and think, oh, I made a bunch of mistakes along the way. So the good thing about a second startup is you like to try and correct a lot of those mistakes. Right, right. So when we launched our second startup, we were super excited. 28 Bedford Street was the apartment that my sister and I lived in, in New York City, our first apartment. We grew up in New Jersey, always dreamed of moving to New York City when we grew up, and this was a really, really incredible place for us. In truth, it was a total shithole. Can I say that on a podcast? Oh, yeah, no, It was a it. total shithole, um, but we loved it. So when we were coming up with our new company, we thought 28 Bedford would be an amazing name. So we get the URL, we get all our social tags, and call our attorney, because now I know to do things like this, and say, hey, how does a trademark look? And he goes, let me do a quick search. OK, great, trademark looks OK. I will now do the deep dive. I just like stopped at trademark looks great. So we oh. were about to launch a deal on Living Social, which is, you know, it, it goes out to 4 million women. And um, 48 hours before that, so of course we go to the printers. 10,000 packages printed up, 28 Bedford. We're super psyched, logo looks great, packaging is amazing. And our lawyer calls us up and says, by the way, you'll never get that trademark. There's a company called 25 Bedford that does e-commerce. Mm. So mm. you had it. Did you just like gasp for me? You did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was that, that's what I did. So it, it's, um, it's this moment where you think, I have $16,000 worth of merch 
in my garage with a name that I can't use. And we're going live in 48 hours. So it was um, a little bit of chaos and a whole lot of panic. And then you just have to, you just have to do what you can do, which is come up with a new name really freaking fast and get some packaging printed up. But we're a startup. I, I certainly don't have the budget right. to what do you re do? You, what do you do? Yeah. You get stickers printed up and you slap them on. Okay. <laughs> and that's what you do. And is it great? No. Is it what I want my customers to experience the first time they order a pair of weight and bell tights? Absolutely not. But it is what it is. And that, so we've had to, you know, we do print up, we, we did print up a few, we print up a thousand. So 10% of them will have the proper packaging and 90% yeah. will have a sticker on it. And I just think that that's so it goes, you know, stuff happens and you have to make so the you best So you kept been talking about a philosophy here of just like getting it done no matter what, right? Oh, that's absolutely. The, I mean, yeah. that's startup 101, right? You don't have the choice. I don't work for, a, you know, I don't work for Macy's that could say, oh, let's just print up, you know, $16,000, drop in the bucket. I'm like, holy shit, $16,000. Like yeah. You know, you just have to, you have to, Understand what went wrong, right? Okay, so next time I do this, I'm going to get my trademark legit for sure before I print anything up. So I'm gonna slow down a little bit. But then, okay, great, lesson learned, but now I have this problem. So you just have to go with it. You have to lighten up a little bit and just hope that your audience is gonna be okay with it. Okay, so even if you're pushing really fast and you're trying to make these decisions that just kind of hustle, like where do you think that you can cut corners and like where do you think that like you can't? Like where should people focus their energy? So it's important to move fast. I don't wanna take anything away from that. I think that the worst thing a startup can do is move slowly, right? Because someone will come out sooner, someone will come out better, people get bored, do every, fail fast, work fast, everything fast. However, um, and, and, and scrappiness, right? Scrappiness is key, that's how you can get a, company off the ground, but two areas where I think, having learned the hard way, um, that really makes sense to spend money is in accounting. Get someone to do your books from the beginning. Mm. Um, the, if they don't make sense from the time you launch to think about getting audited, which we did this year, and they say like, hey, you know, get your last three years of accounting and all your sales and all your taxes and all your customers, and it's, it's terrible. Um, but if your accounting is set up properly, it's actually printing out three different things and you're okay. So accounting, definitely paper and legal. I think getting your company structured properly, getting the partnership agreements with you and your co-founders, whether you end up raising venture money or not, these are all things that are really important. And it's not because my, you know, my co-founder is my sister, right? There's no one on the planet I trust more than my sister. However, you still need to be legally protected because she could marry a crazy person and then legally he owns half my company and then they get divorced and he owns 25% of my company because he owns, you know, so all these things. You think she's going to marry a crazy person? Well, she is married now and he's definitely not okay, crazy. Okay. <laughs> but she wasn't okay, when, we, when we started yeah. the company. So she could have married a crazy. Yeah, I mean, she she's could've. got a sketchy dating history. Okay. It could have gone south. <laughs> But it did it, and well, that's so okay. <laughs> getting all your ducks in a row, I think, legally is really important. And so what made her dating history so sketchy? Oh. Well, well, we're from I'm New Jersey. Kidding. I'm just kidding. We don't answer that one. That's not a real question. Okay, so difference between raising money and doing it yourself, because you've been through two companies now. Yep. One time you decided to raise money, one time mm -hmm. you decided to kind of keep it in your yes. your own thing. Tell me the difference, especially for people who are balancing this out, what they should be looking for, what did you learn from it? I believe that if you absolutely absolutely can do you should do anything you possibly can short of like putting your house up against your company um, other than raising money raising money is really important in certain situations um, I don't necessarily know if it was the right decision for us but it is it gets you it you play at a different level you answer to different people your priorities shift a little bit because all of a sudden instead of be building a solid, a solid foundation for your company and building a company that scales and that has true profit, all you care about in the fundraising cycle is top line revenue, right? Because what you do is you raise your seed round and then you're on this, the minute that first check gets in the bank, you're on this incredible sprint to your series A. So unless you show incredible growth, people aren't gonna look at you mm, for your A. Gotcha. So for these so, long-term things. Yeah, so the scary really thing is, is like, there's a cliff, right? And you have to run as fast as you can so you have enough momentum to get to the other side. And if you get to the end, you can't stop because you're running as fast as you can, so you're gonna fall. So it, you just can't stop when you get in that fundraising circle. And then it's that same thing when you get your A, you're like, okay, now we have to show crazy top line because then we have to get to our B and it turns into this, through this cycle. Then I think so many people lose sight of building a sound business that makes sense from a profit gotcha. standpoint. You know, being a profitable, you know, I don't think Warby Parker's profitable yet. You know, I don't know if, I don't know if Zappos was profitable when Amazon bought them. You know, it's, 
it's not the way Silicon Valley is set to think. I see what you're saying. Okay, so it's just so you have, it kind of comes down to control, I guess, right? Just knowing that you're comfortable with what the company is so it can have that long-term win. Right, and not feeling the outside pressure to grow at an unnatural speed. So okay. with Wade & Bell, what we're really trying to do is grow it thoughtfully. It's a, you know, it's a product with very nice margins, and you know, we can build it in a way that you sell a little bit, and then you spend a little bit to market it. It doesn't have to be lightning speed. Gotcha. I'm hoping. No, that's we'll true. Yeah, no, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Okay, well thank you so much for coming. So we want to talk about a couple of places that they can follow you um, and learn more. So you have your Twitter account, which is Dorian Howard number one. Yes. First from Dorian number one Howard in the world. One. Dorian Howard one on Twitter. Then you also have milkandhoneyshoes.com mm -hmm. and then your new one is wadeandbell.com. Yes. So um, you guys should check that out and thank you so much for coming Thanks and talking for having me. Talking backwards and My uh, pleasure. giving us some advice. So thank you very much. All right. So no, oh yeah. No, before you go, we gotta we gotta sing you our famous drinking song. Oh yes. Yeah. So we're gonna finish, we're gonna sing you our famous drinking song for taking some time out. <laughs> to you. <gasps> Cups and downs we gather around and sing a drinking song. Toast to those we love the most, the place where we belong. Cheers.